we have some more groundbreaking news surrounding XRP. I mean, I've when's the last time we've seen this much activity surrounding XRP that's positive? First, you had, uh, just as an example, you had the UAE activity, United Arab Emirates activity. Then we then we got the announcement about Thailand. The Thailand government wants Ripple to build some XRPL-based systems. Um, I mean, it's just one thing after another. Now you have this. Ripple CEO spotlights XRP's groundbreaking milestone. What is the groundbreaking milestone? Why is all of this happening now? That's always the question. Why is there a big push? Interesting. CME has launched pricing indices for XRP and ICP. What does it mean? It just happens that all of this activity is occurring right when we're about to reach the end of the case. Complete. I'm talking about the complete end of the case. That's a coin. You believe in coincidences. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse recently took to the to the X social media to spotlight XRP's new milestone after Chicago based derivatives exchange CME Group announced its plan to launch real time indices and reference rates for the cryptocurrency in collaboration with CF benchmarks. Let's scroll past all of these different ads and bullet points. Garlinghouse has commented that having a quote, a trusted benchmark reference rate, unquote, is the first step toward institutional crypto products. Boom. Don't write that off. That is a bomb to drop. He's letting people know he's telling. Are the people not hearing what's they not seeing what's coming? Listen to each his own. Maybe you see something different than what I see. Maybe you disagree with my viewpoint. It's perfectly fine. But what I'm seeing, he said it's the first step. We're just, and this is what I've been saying. A lot of experts have said we're in the nascent phase. Um, I concur. We're just getting to where we want to be. These uh, uh, technologies like Ripple, uh, Ripple, whatever else is built on XRPL by Volante, SBI, these are for institutions. So how could they have thrived? How could they have done what they're supposed to do if the institutions couldn't use them? But wait, now that we're at the gate and the gate is about to be flung open and the institutions can go wild using these products at some point in the near future. That's what it looks. That's where it looks like it's going. Not financial advice. Just my humble opinion from what I'm observing as a researcher. But if that is the case and they could finally use it, then what does that logically mean for their future? I think I know what it means. I'm here to get some of that institutional money, some of that bank money. But if they can finally use it, that means they would that the uh, the value of it would change. Correct. I don't see what's uh, I don't I don't see how that's not logical, but it says is the first step toward institutional crypto products, which means that there's more steps to come. This is a big one. It's why everything's happening, I believe. When that court case is over, I'm starting to believe more and more because of all this activity. Like I said, UAE, they got the green light over in the main region. Thailand government comes out, say, hey, we want to use, we want some XRPL based systems. There's so many different things happening. Um, then it, it continues. Quote, the market has spoken, unquote. The Ripple boss added, the market has spoken. Look how powerfully he's speaking. We're getting close to a moment and someone out there, I know someone will say, oh, man, he's supposed to speak like that. He's the CEO. Yeah, the CEO said before he was he was damn, he was damn near in tears at one point. And you could see in his interviews at the time where everything was really happening with the court case first popping off. He wasn't a happy camper. There wasn't a lot of positivity going on. They weren't sure about the future. Although winners tend to still move forward anyway, and they did. So the way he sounded then versus the way he sounds now, completely different. Not, And it's not because he's the CEO, obviously, or he would have sounded the same no matter what. No, he sounds different now because we are approaching a moment. Obviously, there's a catalyst. There's a, a cause for every effect. And for every cause, there is a B cause. The addition of XRP shows that there is a demand for a reliable price feed among institutional investors. Uh, how many banks did? No, not, let me not say banks. 
How many partnerships do you think Ripple's keeping in secret? That's a real question. Let me know in the comment section if you you feel up to it. It's up to you. You don't have to. But um, how many how many partnerships do you think that they're holding back? They have on NDAs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I showed you the other day. Did you watch those videos the other day? Oh, this last three videos. I feel like we're very potent. Did you watch the members only videos? Oh, because they go a little bit deeper. They go a little bit deeper. I'm putting I've been putting some very key information in there. It's all linked together, period. But wait a minute. Did you watch one of those last videos when I put up information? It was a regular subscriber video on the IMF. What did they say that they lacked? What did they say out themselves that was the weak point in their systems? They told. Was that yesterday's video? I don't remember. Might have been yesterday's video. It should be a video titled something like they're telling or they told or something. I don't know. I try to convey what I'm talking about in the video through the titles as accurately as I can while still keeping it exciting. They're telling. They said trans uh, uh, national transactions. That's their weak point. They don't have interoperability and that's what they need to solve. They haven't solved it yet. That's what they, I showed you the articles. The, do people understand what that means? If they don't have interoperability, you tell me, where do they get it from? Wait, they're a part of the legacy system. They have reached to every legacy system company. They can make negotiations. They have good partnerships. So you mean to tell me that none of those legacy system companies, after all of these years, have provided them with interoperability? That would lean me to think they can't. They don't have the global reach. Not with global fragmentation. They don't. That's just logical. Who is in the who in the BRICS nation is going to want to work with them in the West? So that eventually when you don't do what you're told, they can cut you off from the system like they did with Swift. Who's going to work with them? Did you see what the large institutions are saying that um, saying about BRICS nation and how much power they have, that they'll be the power in the world in the future? Do you see those articles? They just came out today. Did you see them? I'm not saying that that's going to be 100. That's 100 percent guarantee. But that's what they're saying. Easily looked up. Reputable company saying that. But if that's the case, who's going to want to work with the West so they can get cut off? They got to bow down to some master or something. They're not, it's not going to happen, which means what? That means the Western companies don't have that interoperability. They don't have global reach. And they're not respected. Oh, they're respected. No, they're not. No, they're not. There's a difference between fearing someone. And here's what a lot of people, they get this twisted. Just because someone fears you doesn't mean that they respect you. Fear is not respect. If you're a warrior, you'll understand that. If you're a warrior, you're going to understand. It's not fear is not fear does not uh, uh, um, equate to respect. Those same people will, uh, that, that fear you will be the same ones that give you the Brutus, that give your Caesar the Brutus. That's respect. Well, a lot of people fear Caesar. What they do with those? Uh, what did they do with those knives? That's respect. Be careful when people fear you. So, no, <laughs> that's not respect. They don't respect them. So then the question becomes, where do they get interoperability? Who has true global reach? Haven't I I've said this a bunch of times, but these articles lead us. See, what we're doing is confirming things now when we look at this information is leading us back to the same conclusion. But if we if we are scientifically analyzing information and doing experimentation with, you know, different ideas, combining different ideas, um, eliminating what looks less uh, uh, possible and, is, and we're arriving at the same point. Through our experimentation, that means that that's closer to, to the truth than anything else we have. That's why we arrive at the same point. That's a good thing. You either want to be a researcher or be a scientist and experiment and really put that mind to work or you don't. Then you get left behind. But, I mean, you could disagree. You could disagree with me if you want. I, I, it doesn't. I'm still going to think the way that I think. <laughs> like, my train doesn't stop for anyone. I'm going to keep marching forward. I promise you. But if they don't have interoperability, where do they get it from? The only ones who have true global reach that can combine the legacy and the DLT companies are the bank coin companies. 
But here's the thing with interoperability and linking everything together. When we talk interoperability, we're talking the trillions. We're talking the big money. Yeah, we're talking the long fight, you know, the one everybody's scared of. So they go run into just the quick money plays because, uh, you know. It's just going to take a lot of heart to keep fighting for a long time. You want to go multiple rounds. No, they want to go a couple rounds. <laughs> they want to spar. They don't want to go those long rounds. But that's what anything good in life you have to work hard for. Anything good in life. I don't know where people get this idea that good things in life, it just comes to you real quick. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. If you want a good relationship, it takes a long time to develop that good relationship. Long time. You want a good vehicle, it takes some time to put that together. You want a good education, it takes some time to put in those years of learning. You want to be a good martial artist, it takes years and time and practice and going through hardships. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And pushing through that to your better self. Everything that is good takes time. It doesn't come quick. Simple as that. Things that tend to happen and occur quickly do not have substance enough to be long lasting. And that's why they're fleeting. They go away quickly. You got a quick relationship. You, you meet somebody, you hook up real quick. Boom, that's then it's done. You didn't learn about them enough. You didn't know their background. You don't know their mentality. You just saw the physical and went for it. I'm just giving examples. Your car thrown together real quick and cheap. Yeah, it's going to break down real quick. Like anything that happens that quickly, that fast, it's not long lasting. Good things take time. This bank coin game. It's been simmering for a little bit. Making lots of progress. That big, big trophy. I look at it like that. I do. It's right there. Something's coming and we're observing it, but we're pushing forward. We're playing the chess game. And so. Now you have something like this. This is apart from XRP CME group. Also launched these products for internet computer. The real time indices will be updated every second based on order book activity on such major digital asset trading platforms as Coinbase, Bitstamp, and Kraken. Let me ask you a, a question. When it comes to United States, they're saying, well, "Hey, man, we may not need a CBDC. We may not need a a digital asset to represent United States." That's interesting. The banks that control the United States, they run everything. Are they private? Let me ask you a question. Listen, you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Just look at how everything starts. Look at how the Federal Reserve starts started. Look at how the IMF started. I did a video on this long ago. Check that date. Long ago. Look how the Federal Reserve began. Look how the IMF began. Look at how Ripple began. Look at how SDRs began. Look at the idea behind it. I covered this long ago in the beginning of the channel. Check the date on it. When you see that video, check that date on there. I put the documents up, everything. This is why I was doing hardcore research when people actually like that. People don't like hardcore research that much anymore. Not, not in mass, they don't. I'm telling you by the numbers. I'm telling you by the numbers. I remember there was a one point I was doing very heavy researched videos, one after another, after another, after another. And the numbers just kept going down and down and down and down. The people didn't want that hardcore research anymore. They didn't like it. At one point, they did like it. They didn't like it anymore in mass. Those videos are still there. The numbers, the numbers showed me a lot. The analytics showed me a lot. So you have to evolve, you have to advance, you have to change things up to if you want to be successful at something. It's like if I'm going for a double leg and that's not working, maybe I go for a single. Maybe I go for a, a duck under. My jab is not working, maybe I use a double jab. I got you have to switch it up. I have to you have to adapt. But let's go here. I said we you know, I'm going to try to touch on all of these articles like I said. Sometimes I get I just get in the zone and I just don't get to all articles. So Cardano we have a little bit of Cardano news. All right. All right. And it says this Cardano's ADA is finally starting to climb. 
This is while the cryptocurrency market is currently experiencing a period of stagnation. ADA, the native crypto of Cardano, has recently seen a notable increase in its price. This momentum is driven by imminent technological developments and increased adoption of the Cardano blockchain. What's crazy about that is so many people are, are against ADA. I don't understand this. I just don't understand the mentality. I'm not a controlling person. You do what you want to do. I do what I, I want to do. If we meet in the middle, if we vibe together, that's one thing. That's different. We just happen to walk with each other for a while, but it's at, it's at a person's will. You get what I'm saying? Others are not like that. They have this controlling mind. I don't like controlling people. You're not going to control me. I don't like that. They tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And if you don't follow what they say, they don't like you. They don't want, they don't want real friends. They don't want uh, uh, equals. They want someone they can control. It's crazy to me. But I see a lot of that. And so these some people, they may not have, let's say they don't have X. They don't even have XRP. They don't even have Cardano or ADA. They claim to hate them, don't like them. But they'll come to other people who believe in these projects and take the time. I don't know how they have this extra time. I don't know. I'm constantly building in life. I have a, I mean, if I'm not building, I'm learning. I have a lot of studying I do. A lot of books I'm reading, a lot of meditation time. I'm developing myself as a being constantly. So I don't have a lot of time to waste. But anyway, they have this time. They take their time and they come to other people and say, that's trash. Why do you have it? Why are you holding that? That's the signs of a control freak. They don't know the person from Adam. They don't know what their situation is. They don't know why they're involved with it, but they tell you, you need to get rid of that. They also do an opposite way too. buy this. Be careful out there with people trying to control you control your own fate. It's not advice. I'm just saying it would be wiser to control your own fate. Be careful. There's a lot of people who are just controlling out there. They don't care if you succeed or you fail. If you get destroyed, it's on you. That's they're going to leave you. They're just going to leave you there. Be careful with that. I mean, like once again, not advice. I'm just saying I see a lot of that. And as an older person, I hate to see people get crushed by controlling people who take no responsibility for what's left in their wake. And I just think about that when it comes to Cardano. So many people just they down Cardano. But when I'm looking at it as a researcher and was, and I'll say also, I have zero Cardano. I probably will never buy Cardano again. You know, it's just not I, I have what I need right now. I have the bank coins. I have a few other things. I have what I need. I feel. And I already had Cardano before in the last bull run. It popped off. Boom. I sold it, took my profit. It was very nice. I'm done. But still looking at it here and I say to myself, it looked pretty bullish. <laughs> I can't deny it. You know, I'm, I can't deny it. It looks bullish. Just my humble, humble opinion. They're doing a lot of good things. Charles Hoskinson. Um, people may not like him as a person, but his mind, his vision is solid. And this is what they're telling you here. The native crypto of Cardano blockchain recently saw its price increase to 38 cents, according to CoinMarketCap data, following the announcement of the CIP 1694 update. This update, expected by the end of July, will introduce significant improvements, including increased speed, improved efficiency and decentralized governance on the network. Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, emphasize that all the elements of CIP 1694 have been finalized, marking a significant step towards a fully decentralized blockchain. Yeah, he wants extreme decentralization. Let's move on here. Let's move on here to hmm, we're going to skip a couple of articles so I can get into Bitcoin in the gold news like I, I, I told you I would. Um, I have two Bitcoin articles here. Let's do this. This one is more positive. So let's do this one here about JP Morgan. I referenced it. And I don't know, I've shot this video here like at least 10 times to get it right. This is the part that people will never see. You do all the research and stuff. You shoot these videos. You got to edit them up. The time spent. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope people understand how much work some, some researchers and video creators put into this stuff. We put a lot into it. Some of us. So now. This article is titled. Why JP Morgan sees a Bitcoin rebound in August. I would love for that to happen. I would. I want it to happen. I want to have some more fun. It's more fun because you know what? It's, it's sad. It's sad in my opinion. But the people get more positive when that money is going up. 
they get more pessimistic and angry and, and sad when it goes down and they just maintain that energy. Now, some of you might say, Mick, that makes sense. They, you know, the money's going down. Um, they will be upset. Listen, I've been through extreme hard times, especially in my youth. Extreme. I'm telling you. And what we used to do when things were harder, we showed each other more love when things got hard. That's how we made it through. We showed each other more love. We came together. We supported each other. We gave each other positive energies and we made it through. So I, I'm of a different mind state. When things get bad, why would you then you're putting out bad energies? You're saying bad stuff to others. Trust me, I know because I see it in the comment section. Why? So, no, no. So that's why I said what I said. Anyway, so I would love for this to happen so that good energy can come back. It says here, first bullet point, JP Morgan sees a Bitcoin rebound in August. Second bullet point, liquidations from Mt. Gox, the German government and Gemini creditors will subside soon. I've been saying that. Didn't I tell people that it's coming? And I, I can't wait. The investment bank said third bullet point, JP Morgan estimated that the crypto sector has only the crypto sector has seen only eight billion dollars in inflows this year so far. So there's a lot more to go or a lot more that can happen. Bitcoin is down 20 percent in the last 30 days. But financial giant JP Morgan doesn't expect the slump to last long. Quote, we continue to look for a crypto market rebound from August onwards, unquote. JP Morgan analysts said in their latest flows and liquidity report released on Wednesday, the group of analysts led by managing director Nicholas, my word, my apologies, I cannot. I'm just going to say Nicholas P. Um, this individual's last name is very, very long. I'm not even going to attempt so I don't mangle it. <laughs> right? But this individual said blamed Bitcoin's uh, performance on heavy selling from Gemini creditors in the German government, as well as fears stemming from the Mt. Gox, cre Gox creditors uh, receiving their own uh, repayment soon. So we went over all that. We've been talking about that for quite some time. Now I see others confirming what I said, but I showed you the articles. I gave you my opinion. Um, and, and so, yeah, so there you have it. When those negative catalysts go away, the positive catalysts have remained, which to me says that the price should theoretically go back up, not financial advice. So now moving on here, we're going to end off here with this last um, Bitcoin article because I messed up the gold article, <laughs> the wrong gold article. My apologies, everyone. But we have this article here is titled German Government Bitcoin wallet drops to 5,800 BTC after major sale. Thank goodness. Um, it's almost over. One of the negative catalysts is almost out there. And then maybe we get back to the bull run. It begins here. The German government has resumed selling its Bitcoin holdings on July the 12th. The move follows a return of some previously transferred Bitcoin to the government's Bitcoin wallet. According to Arkham blockchain data, the German government executed multiple transactions, transferring over a total of 3,200 Bitcoin across various platforms. Recent transfers were sent to Bitstamp, Kraken, and Coinbase, which received 400 BTC each. Additionally, 1,000 BTC and 500 BTC were sent to two unknown addresses. Meanwhile, crypto analyst Michael Van de Pop shared a post on X speculating that the remaining Bitcoin worth approximately $300 million will likely be sold on July the 12th. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.